So uh, Nick is an old friend uh, of mine and an old friend of uh, China City. He's been here, I think, since the very beginning. And, Thank uh, you for inviting me. Um, and Nick is also another iconic uh, figure in the uh, entrepreneurship uh, area uh, in, in, in China. Uh, Wukong is actually your uh, third. My third company, yes. Your third company. So everybody here, I mean, in China uh, knows uh, the destiny of your uh, second company, uh, Kongjong, yes. uh, went uh, listed on NASDAQ and uh, made uh, you uh, a very successful and wealthy uh, gentleman. Um, but you created a first company. Uh, your first company was also a very big success, at least for your investors, right? Yes, yes for my investors. It's uh, China Ren, uh, which I uh, co-founded with uh, Zhou Chen and uh, Yunfan, Yunfan Zhou, the three of us uh, co-founded China Ren, which is, uh, Zhou went on to bigger success with uh, Ren Ren. With Ren Ren and Oak Pacific, yeah. Billion dollar company right now. Uh, on, on, multiple billion, I think. Billion, I, I think, think he is a billionaire. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, so um, can you quickly refresh uh, our, our memory about uh, uh, what I was just saying? Your first company, and then uh, Kong Jong, and then this all the way to, to Wukong now? Uh, yes. I think as, uh, my experience has been, been uh, uh, growing with the Chinese internet. Uh, I started out in 1999 with uh, two partners, uh, Zhou Chen and Yunfan Zhou, we started China Ren. Uh, we, that was the first wave of the internet, which we, uh, we wasn't able to IPO, but uh, we ended up selling to Sohu for uh, $35 million in the year 2000. Uh, that was the end of my first venture. Then my second venture was... Uh, so I, you were not even 30 at the time, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Right? I was, I think, 24. Oh, 24. No, you are not even 25, let's say, at the time. <laughs> uh, we were uh, very lucky in, in terms of that uh, we survived the first wave of the Chinese internet. Then the second wave was the, uh, uh, when we started Kongzhong uh, in the year 2000, uh, 2002, which we went public in 2004 and, and uh, still kept the record of being the fastest company from zero to IPO in two years and two months. That's what the, was Kongzhong doing? Uh, Kongzhong was a leading wireless value add service provider in China. And I believe it still is the leading wireless value add service provider. And then uh, you started uh, Wukong maybe t t two years ago, if I'm not mistaken? Uh, uh, well, close to three years now. Yes, I, I, end of 2008. Started, and, and you yeah. decided uh, to bootstrap the company yes, yes. Uh, uh, by yourself for, 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 uh, yes. for, for that time. Uh, but you recently raised a, a, a big uh, VC round, uh, right? In the last year, I raised uh, how, how the much first round. Uh, it wasn't very much. Um, it's an uh, undisclosed amount. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay, no problem. But it was from U.S. investors, From right? U.S. investors, yes. You, you can disclose the investor or the name of the investor, or you prefer not? Um, actually, um, a lot of companies, you know, it's, uh, in the media, they say, oh, I got investment so, 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 so much from a certain, certain investor, mm. and felt that it was a, it felt it is a confirmation or it's a, something to brag about or yeah. boast about. Mm. But I feel that uh, whenever you get funding or even as an IPO, mm. it's actually the beginning because the investor invests money in you for you to work and to, uh, to build upon it. Not, it's, it's, uh, getting funding is not the finish, it's only the beginning. So I prefer to just work hard and uh, mm. make sure that the company works and make the company well. Mm -hmm. rather than just uh, disclose these uh, investments. I, I, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, and uh, the, the truth is that actually the ideal case scenario is not to raise money at all because VC money is... Ex well, uh, this, our VC friends will be mostly there this afternoon, so I can, I can talk, nobody is listening. But uh, VC money is actually extremely expensive money for investors. So the less you raise, the better it is. It, that's true, that's true. This, uh, as long as you, uh, as you can uh, uh, generate a profit or uh, uh, not need to raise as much money, then it's actually better. If you look at these companies that goes public, um, when, by the time you go public, you would realize that the less you raise, the better because uh, of the shareholding. Yeah. Um, um, the um, Wukong is actually, uh, so Wukong, your current company, is actually uh, reviving an old concept, concept of 
push technology, which was extremely famous uh, almost 15 years ago, right? Yes, yes. Uh, 15 years ago, there was a company called uh, Pointcast. Uh, it was bef uh, most of the Chinese uh, uh, public hasn't heard of this company, but it was very, very uh, popular and a very uh, significant company back then. But uh, it, it was too early for its time, so most people don't know Pointcast. Yeah, the, the, just to revive the, the interesting story about Pointcast, which was one of the hottest startup at that time in Silicon Valley. I, I, I was living in Silicon Valley at the time. So the guy uh, refused uh, an offer uh, of 400 plus million dollars. Yes. And it was right before the internet uh, bubble, for lack of a better name, uh, exploded. And then uh, the assets of the company were bought for maybe three million dollars, something like yes. that. Uh, two to three million dollars. Two to three million dollars. Yeah. So, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the push technology is there's n actually nothing wrong with the technology. It was just too early for its time because the network wasn't ready for a push technology. But which it is, it is today, which is uh, very ready. And if you look at uh, uh, the Sina Weibo or Twitter or these uh, uh, or even uh, uh, Ren Ren or Facebook, they are all based on push technology. So users doesn't have to actively look for any information, and information just pushed to you. Uh, so I, I see all my friends have this habit of moving the thumb and just uh, swipe the thumb, and then you, you see the, the messages and the, all the information coming down from the Sina uh, Weibo, which is, uh, so that is push, because information is coming at you. So uh, you were mentioning uh, Sina Weibo uh, just now. Uh, how do you position Wukong vis-a-vis? Uh, Wukong uh, is a... Uh, push, push technology based informational service on the mobile phone, which uh, the users doesn't even have to sign up. They don't even have to sign up their uh, friends like, uh, or people they uh, zhu. So you don't have to zhu. We automatically filter and find information that would be interesting to you. The Sina Weibo is that you have to say, oh, I'm interested in Kai Fu, or I'm interested in, uh, uh, for example, Pan Shi Yi, or uh, Yao Chen, or someone. Then their information get pushed to you, but um, you have to actively pick out the people you are interested in. But for our Wukong technology, for our push engine technology, is that we filter the internet, we crawl the internet, we find all the interesting things, interesting links, and it gets pushed to you. And you would, and the, the system actually adapts, so it actually learns your behavior and helps uh, give you more relevant and better pushes. So for the users, you can be very, very lazy. You can be sitting back and not doing anything, and in interesting information just coming at you. And that's the Wukong technology. Why, why after such an outstanding success with Kong Zhong, that, as I said, made you a very uh, successful uh, um, gentleman and, and, and a wealthy man, uh, uh, why, why do you still want to create a company? And uh, what's, what's the driving force? Uh, I think maybe I cannot find a job. <laughs> uh, so um, I, I, since the beginning, right after I graduated from Stanford in 1999, and I've decided that for the rest of my career, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to work for myself. And that's been all along. Well, my, my passion is to start companies, start new things. And getting things to work is very, very fun. And that's why I'm still doing it. Nick, I understand that Wukong has betting early on on uh, international expansion uh, because uh, many of your customers, current customers right now, are coming from uh, outside of China, right? Uh, right now, we have a lot of interest from uh, telco carriers uh, all over the world. Uh, but right now, uh, my focus is still in China currently because uh, uh, we already have lots and lots of... Uh, uh, telecom carriers, local provincial telecom carriers, that's very interesting in technology and uh, deploying our technology into their system. So we're serving right now over 10 million uh, subscriber, mobile subscriber every day. In China? In China, yes. Okay. In 11 provinces. Okay, wow. Uh, Chinese tech companies have traditionally focused uh, most of their efforts on the domestic market. Um, is that now changing, you think? I think most of the Chinese internet companies are still focusing in China because um, I think one thing is that they're afraid to go outside, go outside of China. 
So, and one reason is they're afraid to go outside China. The second is that the Chinese domestic market is very, very big. It's already uh, able for them to grow. But I think one day that the market will saturate and uh, these Chinese companies will have to look outside of China for, for growth. So I think that one day will come and maybe next four or five years you can see more companies moving abroad. Well, you, you're not afraid of going out of China. You were educated in, in the US. Um, do you think that Wukong has what it takes in terms of technology, tech innovation, to compete internationally at some point? Uh, yes, I believe uh, Kong Zhong will be able to, uh, to move abroad. But uh, one thing about uh, the, I, I was talking to many of my friends who are uh, uh, working on these, in these uh, company projects, and they were saying that one thing that's more difficult for Chinese companies to go abroad is that the, uh, the Chinese companies do not uh, bond together uh, abroad. See, when I was in, the, in, the, in Singapore the, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I see the, the company um, uh, which is called Isetan, which is a, a Japanese company. Uh, uh, they have a delivery service, which is another Japanese company. And uh, so th the Japanese companies will bond together because they're partners in Japan. They will, when they move abroad, they will bring their partner abroad with them. So it will form a small ecosystem and they will self-sustain and they'll bond together. But if you look at the Chinese companies, everyone is for his own. So one company goes abroad, there's no partners. It's very, it's very hard for them to make it uh, in the foreign market. So I think it's, uh, uh, for Chinese companies to go abroad, I think we, we have to form these uh, cooperations and go abroad together. For example, uh, different, as different uh, segments of the value chain, of the supply chain, well, go abroad together, then this, uh, perhaps this way it will work. This, this should probably be structured by, by the government, right? Because if you let people to, what do you think? Um, I think the government should have these initiatives uh, to push certain industries abroad. I think Japan and uh, a lot of countries are doing this. The government has this initiative. I know Korea has the initiative of uh, the, 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 the help, the government would actually help these companies to go abroad and to set up in the foreign markets. I think the, the, the Chinese Commerce Ministry should do more uh, in this aspect. Interesting. Um, many, many companies uh, have found it pretty complicated to start operations here. Uh, I, uh, I personally think this is uh, the place to even as a foreigner to start a company uh, here. So do, do you think so also? That, do you think that this is a place for, for a non-Chinese entrepreneur to start a company here? A non-Chinese entrepreneurs? Non-Chinese. A non-Chinese entrepreneurs. Um, I, I, I think it's, uh, it, it's okay because uh, this market you have to be very local. Even if you're Chinese, um, if you don't uh, really understand the way to do business and to do things in China, it will not succeed. For example, um, I, I think Jack Ma uh, from Alibaba, he said one thing that's very interesting, and I felt this is actually, uh, it, it's very true. And he said, uh, eBay is very strong overseas. Uh, in a lot of countries, eBay is the number one e-commerce site in many, many countries. And uh, Jack Ma said, eBay is like a shark. Okay, swimming in the ocean, he's very, very strong. Whereas the ocean, the shark is very, the, the biggest predator in the oceans. And, uh, Alibaba or Taobao is uh, a crocodile in the Yangtze River. So uh, the, if the crocodile moves into the ocean, he's going to be eaten by the shark. But uh, if the shark swim into the Yangtze River, <laughs> uh, he, he thinks he'll win. The shark will not be able to survive. And China is very, very unique in its market. So to be able to succeed in China, you really have to adapt to the Chinese way of doing business, the Chinese way of doing marketing, doing business development. So you have to be very, very local. So if you're a foreigner, it's okay. Uh, you just have to, uh, it's like evolution. You just have to be able to adapt to this environment. Uh, or you just have to, to understand whether you're, you're, you're fish for, uh, for rivers or fish for oceans yes. and, uh, and avoid one of them. Uh, or you become the, you used to be in the ocean, but you uh, get on ground and then you become a local animal. Like wow. uh, in China, they say uh, there's uh, the Haigui, 
or the sea turtles, which is returning the, the haigui. And there's uh, what's called the tu bie, which is uh, local turtles. <laughs> like uh, uh, tu means uh, very local and uh, local turtles. So for the sea turtle, although the size is very big, uh, if you get on ground, you have to adapt to the ground. And if you are able to adapt, then you, you become very strong because usually the sea turtles are very big and you can use your size and really make a success. So it depends on your own abilities. But you should definitely make big, big, big efforts. I mean, you cannot come as a, as a, as a foreign company here and say, okay, I do minor translation, minor adaptations on my software, and uh, I'm going to impose my product here. Because what you're talking about is basically uh, re reinventing yourself. Yes, reinventing yourself. Yes. Um, my last question for you. What would you recommend to a first-time first -time entrepreneur to do in terms of choice or the right tech concept and in terms of execution to make it, to make it right, right from the start? Right from the start? Um, I, I, I think it's, um, especially with a tech company, you have to be very market-driven rather than technology-driven. And I cannot emphasize that enough because uh, uh, usually... Uh, most tech companies and most the uh, entrepreneurial teams I see, uh, some of them have very good technology, very interesting technology. They work very hard at it. And uh, they come out and they talk to me and I tell them that you have great technology but you have no market. There's no need. Uh, most people um, have this idea that uh, if you, have, you, you build a hammer and you see everybody's a nail. Do you see my point? You, 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 that your technology is a hammer. You see, oh, there's a nail, boom, there's a nail. You see application for your technology everywhere. But then again, you don't realize that it's not a nail, it's a screw. <laughs> you build a nail, <laughs> you hammer the screw. <laughs> it's not going to work. What, what the world might need is not a hammer, it needs a screwdriver. <laughs> so, so most technology, you have to realize what the market needs and whether your product really fits that need rather than great technology. There's too, many te too much technology. Okay, this is for the first part of my question in terms of tech, uh, the choice of a tech concept. And yes. then what, what, what would you recommend in terms of execution? Execution? Uh, execution is the most important thing in China. It's actually more important than innovation. Chinese, most Chinese companies that you see are very successful, are very strong in execution. Because in China, there's a very bad protection of intellectual property. So even if you have a great innovation, it gets copied very quickly. So China, the, the entire Chinese market does not reward innovation. It rewards execution. So most uh, entrepreneur teams, I, I recommend that if you're not strong in execution, you better beef up this uh, ability, better make the execution stronger, because otherwise you're not going to be able to survive in China. And the innovation could just be copied. But, but more precisely, what type of um, recommendation in terms of, of, of execution you should do as a first-time entrepreneur? I mean, what, what type of top priorities uh, you, sh you should take into account? Uh, execution is actually uh, very easy to say, uh, say what to do, but it's very difficult to do. This is, this is the execution. Execution is about doing every little thing right, and that's hard. Uh, if you play golf, you will know what I'm talking about, because for golf, the ball is sitting still. It's not a moving ball. It's like, like uh, tennis or ping pong or, or basketball. The ball's moving. The ball is sitting still on the ground. Try to hit a sitting ball, and it's still very hard <laughs> to hit it far and hit it straight. And that's execution, because you have to control every muscle, every movement, to make sure that you, you hit this uh, ball right. So for, for execution, my recommendation is uh, in our company, we have uh, four Chinese characters. That's, uh, that's the, uh, what we do, that's, that, that drives what our, uh, our execution is called, uh, four Chinese characters, which means do it right away. This is the attitude we have in our company. For example, this is what I mean. Uh, I have a talking with uh, Frank. For example, a little meeting, we're having coffee. And Frank said, this, uh, uh, this is a great idea. I should uh, partner with some, uh, this person. What the Zhe Jiu Ban concept is that it's not be like, after our conversation, I'm going to call the other guy. It's like I take out my phone. 
I call him right now. Where we're having coffee, I call him right now to say, "Hey, I have this great idea. We should work together." It's called 这就去办 I'm not going to waste one minute. Even if a meeting in anywhere, just when you think of something, call right away. So Nike was saying, "Just do it." So it's just do it right away. Just do it now. Now. <laughs> just okay. do it now. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank, thank you. So you. Much, thank、Nick. you. Great to to to, to work. Good to see you. Take care. Take care. Thank you.